Honorable Minister of Education, Ms. Priya Manik Chan, Chancellor of the University of Guyana, and Chair of UG Foundation, Professor Edward Green, Vice Chancellor Professor Paloma Mohammed Martin, Envoy Extraordinary Honorable David Lamy, Trustees and other members of the UG Foundation Board, members of the Dipl Diplomatic Corps, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, a special good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending on where in the world you're joining us from. Greetings to all of you from the Torkling campus. It is just after 1 p.m. or so, just about 1.20 p.m. here in, in Georgetown, Guyana, and I apologize for the late start. My name is Jaina Wayne Dionot, and I'm the director of the Department of Events, Conferences, and Communication at the University of Guyana. I'm indeed honored to be chairing this historic launch of the UG Foundation. We are very pleased that you're able to join us at this event, which has been many years in the making. I think it was a VC who pointed out that it, the conversation started eight years or so ago. Your being here with us today is testimony to the fact that you care about UG, our national treasure. It also, also shows that you're interested in the development of Guyana, our beloved country. And I want to thank all of you very, very much for that. UG is rapidly changing in dynamic and interesting ways, and it is an exciting time to partner with us as we step up our efforts to continue building a university that is modern and one that delivers high quality educational products and services, which our stakeholders expect, especially those whose desire is to achieve a university education. UG has cemented its place as a national, regional, an international development partner. We're confident of its potential to become world-class. Some of you would have been following the stories in the media, and you would have seen how the University of Guyana is literally changing lives of ordinary people. This is what we aim for, to change lives for the better, and this is what your support will do. The university is about to celebrate its 60th anniversary in 2023, and the UG Foundation is another important pillar that will help the institution achieve the ambitious goals set out in the 2040 blueprint, including the one in relation to achieving the one graduate per household. So ladies and gentlemen, the launch of the foundation today is quite a significant one. During the course of the presentations from the respective speakers, you will learn more about UG Foundation, its aims, aspirations, activities, and how we can all be involved in this noble venture. Also, please note that the bios of the speaker are all posted on the UG uh, Foundation website. So in the interest of time, there will be no detailed introductions of the speakers. Before I go right into the program, just, just allow me to, to say thank you again to all of you for joining us. Uh, I now go to Professor Green. Let us invite Professor Edward Green, Chancellor of the University of Guyana and Chair of UG Foundation who will deliver welcoming remarks and do a presentation which will focus on the aims and the grand challenges of the UG Foundation. Professor Green, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Master of Ceremonies. And I join you in indicating that we are really regretful of the late start. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we are really pleased that you could be with us, all protocols are observed. And in fact, in my presentation, I want to extend, first of all, a welcome to you all and real gratitude for our ability to reach out to you this afternoon and for you to join us. I want to speak to you on what the foundation is, our mandate, what we do, our guide, how we plan to do it, our grand challenges, and when and about what are the benchmarks, our next steps. Why the foundation? We, in fact, were mandated by the council to form this foundation in September of 
2020. It was incorporated in November 2021 with a structure that is an independent entity with a board of trustees of executive ex officio members and governance process that is enshrined in its trust deed and the bylaws. We also are reaching out to international corporate associates, all of which you will see on the website. Our guide really is rooted in the University of Ghana's ambitious blueprint 2040. The rollout of the blueprint in four or five year terms to 2040 when the University of Ghana will be 75 years. And the goals really that impressed the board of the foundation were, let to name a few, that the aim was to produce one graduate per Guyanese household and to ensure that there are changes in the university system that really help us to understand technical and applied knowledge, become a center of excellence for research relevant to Guyanese development, become a de facto strategic partner of Guyana's development, and produce skilled graduates fit for purpose. The blueprint really also underscores the need to prepare for Guyana's current and future demographic graphic changes to anticipate and respond to threats, risks due to climate change, pandemics, and other biological threats, to adapt rapidly to the evolving technology, as I said before, but in particular the digitization of Ghana's benefit. And in fact, there are two others, to partner with the oil and gas sector and indeed to align with the low carbon development strategy um, proclaimed by the Guyana government. Finally, I think what we were impressed about is that this blueprint understood the shifts in geopolitics that will affect the university and the university community. As a result of which, we have underscored a need for the University Foundation to be complementary to the Department of Philanthropy, Alumni, and Civic Engagement. PACE, as it's known, has played a significant role in identifying funds for the organic and development of this university and will continue to do so. In the case of the University of Ghana Foundation, it will complement these by moving to attract and mobilize large sums for endowments. And with PACE, the foundation hopes that it would help to build a culture of philanthropy not only within the university, but among the alumni and friends of the University of Ghana. So consequently, the foundation has highlighted four grand challenges as a way of moving forward. The first grand challenge is really the most, not the most important, but very important. It is for investing in human capital for a sustainable future. And in this respect, the priority is to create and sustain scholarships and partnerships with international academic institutions and international research innovation centers to rapidly increase the number of University of Ghana faculty obtaining terminal degrees and postdoctorate fellowships, as well as to promote postgraduate studies at the University of Guyana. But the challenge also includes funding endowed and chaired professorships to attract high-profile researchers and professionals that contribute to the enhancing of the University of Ghana's national, regional, and international reputation, and to establish 
a scholarship fund for disadvantaged students. Beyond that, it is our hope to create an omnibus fund which would take care of issues as they unfold. Grand Challenge 2 focuses on the creation of a green university for a green Guyana and a sustainable global environment. And the priorities here relate to developing sustainable housing for students on all campuses, for example, and creating safe spaces, walkways, and sidewalks, and beautification of the campus, its landscape, both take turn and take ten campuses, as well as the University of Ghana's other campuses across Guyana. Grand Challenge 3 focuses on modernizing essential systems and services. And this really revolves around priorities to preserve Guyana's special collection at the university's library, to upgrade the University of Ghana's students' complex and student facilities on all campuses, and to create dedicated sports facilities, including a modern sports complex. And Grand Challenge 4 really focuses on accelerating innovation through centers of excellence and research institutes. And in this respect, there is um, the priority for developing an institute of empowerment of women and girls and developing a creative center, art center, to advance the fine and performing arts and Guyana's cultural enterprise by promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion. I want to say before we deal with how we will meet these grand challenges, to let you know that um, this particular set of grand challenges and priorities were composed by a group of very dedicated um, members of, of the board, led by Professor Colin Ramsey, for which we give very special thanks. And we move forward to dealing with how we would meet these grand challenges. And really, we are dealing with promoting UNI UG's bold vision and ambition of representing UG's short and long-term needs, supporting um, UG's um, development with partners like you at this UGF's birth, and expanding on the base of associates, alumni, and friends, together with a regional and global reach. And so you will see from this that really we are developing a UG Foundation, UG Global Network. USA, Canada, UK, and the UN are just the starting um, collaborating networks. But we hope maybe that we will expand to Africa, to Asia, which we must, and also to the rest of the Caribbean. And so, ladies and gentlemen, on a lighter note, let me introduce you to the new logo as seen at the bottom of this presentation and our Zoom background. Recall the wise old owl of your childhood? Well, this logo is derived from an Amerindian depiction of the owl. The owl is a metal sculpture atop UG's front gate. The UG's owl is now the wise and ambitious new owl that will drive the University of Guyana Foundation. And this foundation, I must reiterate, exists with the sole purpose to serve the University of Guyana. Indeed, in the short term benchmark for the foundation, we pivot towards the University of Guyana at 60 in 2023, the year when the university will be 60 years. We ask you to join us, to help us in this venture that we are on. I want to thank you very much for your patient listening.
Thank you very much, Professor Green. You've put all of this into perspective for us and for all the stakeholders. So I'm sure um, many, many of us today that we are better um, or favor what with the work of UG Foundation. And thank you very much for your own work that has brought us to this level so far. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I am pleased to introduce you to the Honorable Minister of Education, Ms. Priya Manikchand, under whose ministry university falls. She is one of the outstanding alumni of UG, an, an attorney at law by profession, and a good friend and supporter of the university. It is a sincere honor to be addressing you on this highly significant launch of the University of Guyana Foundation. This initiative holds tremendous promise for the advancement of the university's strategic objectives. As we are aware, UG has a critical role in contributing to the positive, sustainable country that we seek to build. It is ideally positioned to have a transformational impact on the lives of Guyanese and to further our ability to attain our national developmental objectives. As the university conducts its current convocation exercises with over 2,600 graduates from fifth disciplines, it is highly encouraging to note that several new academic programs will have graduates for the first time. These programs in areas such as petroleum engineering, entrepreneurship, supply chain management, and environmental science are indicative of the university's progressive and responsive stance while maintaining its core academic principles. It is within this dynamic country context that the UG Foundation is being launched as a key partner supporting efforts at building a viable, premier, tertiary institution with universal appeal. It is highly encouraging to note that the UG Foundation has expanded its scope through the establishment of associate groups in jurisdictions across the globe. Such strategic positioning will significantly advance the Foundation's ability to attract endowments, assist UG in fostering partnerships with a series of regional and international higher educational institutions and with private sector foundations and organizations. This bodes well for its future prospects of generating philanthropic support for students, faculty, research, academic, and other planned developmental objectives of the university. It is vital that the university expands its reach to have greater national access and participation while concurrently improving its regional and international footprint and standing. The ongoing infrastructural improvements, curricula upgrades and expansion, improved research output and other planned initiatives of the university will depend heavily on the work of the foundation. Degree of engagement of alumni in the life of the universities of central import, as is the ability to create and foster a culture of philanthropy within our broader national institutional frameworks. We must therefore work in partnership as the success of the University of Guyana Foundation and the university is directly linked to the attainment of our country's well-placed developmental goals. I therefore commend you on this highly promising initiative. Wish you well in your endeavors and anticipate news of your tremendous success. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister. And thank you to the government of Guyana for the support that it has given to the university over the years, and now to the University of Guyana Foundation. Um, I will now call on Professor Green once more to introduce the Board of Trustees. He should have done this um, just now, I guess it would have slipped him. So I'll just give him the floor again to introduce the Board of Trustees. Um, Professor Green. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I want to call on the Board uh, of Trustees, starting with Professor. Hello, this is George. George, thank you very much. Uh, I applaud and support the University of Guyana's academic contribution to developing the human capital needed to drive Guyana's economic and social development thrust. The Board of Trustees will seek to attract financial contributions to the foundation with the intention of efficiently using these resources 
to provide supplementary funding to help the university to achieve its long-term goals as envisioned by the chancellor, vice chancellor, and their team. Even if I had not received my tertiary education from UG, I would have supported any measures to assist because UG is our, Guyana's, highest national institution of learning. I did attain my tertiary education at UG, and I consider it an honor and privilege to be able to contribute in any capacity to bolster UG's pursuit of the short-term and long-term goals. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Nigel um, Harris, Professor Nigel Harris. Uh, thank you. Um, it, thank you. It is an honor to have been invited to be a member of the University of Guyana Foundation. I want to start by first congratulating Chancellor Professor Edward Green and Vice Chancellor Professor Paloma Mohammed Martin for initiating uh, the UGF. Guyana is likely on the threshold of transformative change, but such change will be impossible without a strong university able to provide a highly educated population with the intellectual, social, vocational, and technical skills necessary to fashion a competitive 21st uh, society. I am happy to be linked with other members of the UGF to help mobilize the material and other support to create an enduring university that I'm sure will be necessary to drive the changes for a vibrant, thriving, sustainable Guyana. Thank you. Thank you very much. And we will be hearing from Ms. Uh, Chapter Persaud later in the program. So we will come back to her and go to Professor Colin Ramsey. Yeah, hello. Yeah, okay. Thanks, uh, Chancellor Green, for inviting me to speak. Yeah, um, I volunteered, I was asked to serve on the board and I volunteered to serve after being asked by Chancellor Green and, and VC Mohammed, Paloma Mohammed. I saw this as an opportunity for me to give back to Guyana, the country that has given me so much. So again, I'm honored to serve. UGF will only be as strong as its board of trustees. And after working with the current board members, such as Nigel and Edward, uh, Professor Bourne, et cetera, I'm impressed by the board's harmony, diligence, and commitment to UG, and their willingness to listen to each other and express their candid opinions. I hope that UGF will be following, work with pace to stimulate a culture of philanthropy, We've heard this statement being expressed several times and it's very important that we create a culture of philanthropy in Guyana among UG students, the business community and Guyanese communities abroad. I hope we can work to fulfill the UG's grand challenges as outlined by, by Professor Green. And I hope we can make all Guyanese proud of UG and UGF. We on the Board of Trustees will be expected to roll up our sleeves and get this job done. And I'm confident that we can. I look forward to serving UGF in the capacity as trustee. And I hope that we can make all the dreams come true. Thanks. Thank you very, very much. Thank you very much. Let us see if Professor Bourne is online. Professor Bourne. Well, let me try. Can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Yes, I think there was a little problem before. Well, let me say I'm very happy to participate in this launch. It's a, a major step in an endeavor that holds much promise uh, for those of us who uh, are going to participate actively in it. 
and obviously for the, the benefit of the University of Guyana. I, I agreed to be a trustee because I've had several decades of professional engagement with the university, starting from the very earliest days in, in 1969. It is my hope that the University of Guyana would develop into a center of excellence in research, teaching, and outreach in all aspects of Guyana's social and economic development. To achieve this would require sustained, substantial investment in human and physical capital at the university. I would hope that through the work of the foundation in, in particular, but of course, through the efforts of uh, University of Guyana's own uh, staff at all levels, that is not just the senior staff, but staff at all levels, there would be a vibrant cooperative relationship between private donors, including corporations and individuals, and between the, these private donors and the government of Guyana in the efforts at securing uh, funds that would accelerate the various investment programs and development programs that the university uh, quite ambitiously uh, hopes to, to undertake in, in the coming years. Uh, I think that Professor Ramsey has, has done a wonderful job in, in, in guiding us so far in, in the preparation of the, grand, the four grand challenges. There is a lot of work still to be done, but I'm sure uh, with, uh, together we, we will move things forward. So I look forward to a very uh, successful uh, few years, the next few years in, in this. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Uh, Kunji, um, Mr. Gabriel Kunji. Master of Ceremonies, the cordialities have already been established, so I'll just delve right in. A very good afternoon to every one of you. I am Gabriel Kunji, a UG alumni from 1977. I reside in Vienna, Virginia with my wife, Malini, and my daughter, Crystal. And I'm now retired, having worked in corporate America in senior management and as a software development engineer, among other areas, like the Foreign Service back in Guyana, and uh, I did teach in Guyana too. I was indeed humbled when I was asked by a Chancellor, Professor Green, to be a trustee for the University of Guyana Foundation. I accepted <laughs> because I always wanted to give back to the University of Guyana. We can literally say that our education at UG is absolutely free when compared to costs for tertiary education at, at, around the globe. Also, I must say that UG produced graduates with a very high caliber and with very competitive standards. Our graduates who have emigrated can attest to this because they have excelled in their careers like I have. UG gave us that foundation for excellence and success. Now, looking back at the, the Turkan campus, it is dilapidated and leaves much to be desired. Some of the buildings are old and are in need of, of reconstruction. The University of Ghana Foundation, with its grand challenges, which you will hear of more in the program, as the program addresses the shortcomings and aspirations the university faces today. Additionally, with the U UG Foundation now finalized with tax-free status in the USA and Canada, contributions and endowments from individuals and companies alike will now be tax deductible, which gives contributors a tax write-off. What an incentive to contribute to our young peoples and our country's development 
while gaining the tax status. So please, I'm calling on UG alumni and friends to consider the University of Ghana in your endowments and philanthropy and get the tax benefits while, while assisting the university to rise up to the grand challenges. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kunji. I want to assure you that um, these recordings would be on the website, um, which would be live um, effectively immediately after this, uh, this function. Uh, but before I conclude, allow me to introduce the other members of the board who are senior members of, of the administration of UW, of University of Guyana. Um, Professor Paloma Mohammed, of course, Vice Chancellor. Dr. Melissa Eiffel, Deputy Vice Chancellor. Bursa, Ms. Holder Punai. And then you will hear from uh, these, these persons later, Ms. Sumati Saranji, alumni representative, and you will hear from a student representative in the program. And those persons complete our board, and I wish as chair to say thanks to all of them. Oh, we skipped a very important member of the trustee, uh, Mr. Fidel Hines. Would you kindly forgive me, Fidel? Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon, hopefully you can hear me. Um, a year ago, I was invited to serve as a trustee and, and the key attraction for me was the sole purpose of this new foundation. The, the sole purpose of this foundation is to serve UG, which I find very exciting. As a financial services profession, professional, I am honored to be able to contribute my financial services experience to this foundation. As most of you are aware, according to the Caribbean Development Bank, Guyana's economic growth is projected to grow by over 47% in 2022. This rapid growth will create massive demand for skilled jobs. I expect many of these jobs will be filled with UG graduates. I'm excited to be part of this foundation and support UG as this university continues its transformational journey to a world-class learning institution that all Guyanese and students can be proud of. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, and, and this ends my introduction of the members of the board of the foundation. Thank you very much, Chancellor. Um, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, very encouraging words from the Board of Trustees. As a young person myself, I'm very excited to be part of this process. Um, I think, uh, as I stated in my, in my introduction, UG is changing in dynamic ways, and it's a good time to really come on board and be part of this journey with us. So I'm very, very happy that we have a wide cross-section of people, people who love UG and people who love Guyana and want to see us do better. So I'm very excited about all of this. Um, let me just mention very quickly that the board has appointed two other officers to serve. Mr. Samuel Gulseran, he will serve as treasurer, and Ms. Yulaski Jarvis, she will serve as, as secretary to the board. Having met the trustees and learned of the aims and grand challenges of UG Foundation, we now turn to Professor Paloma Mohammed Martin, UG's 11th vice chancellor, to tell us how it all began. I should mention that the VC was there from the beginning and was very much involved in the work that was done that led to today's launch. In her presentation, the VC will also pay tribute to Dr. Yesu Prasad and other notable persons who have contributed quite a lot um, to this process to ensure that we have reached this stage. Vice Chancellor, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everyone. And I am delighted to be here for many reasons. Could you change the slide for me, please? So I have seven minutes to speak to you, and I have a lot to say, so these slides are going to go really fast. The first thing is, why do we need a foundation? The University of Guyana, of course, as you know, started in 1963, 
downstairs in, in, in Queen's College's um, classrooms, and it has never been properly resourced. It has, however, been punching way above its weight um, for all those years, you can see with this graphic up here, which is probably too small, but we have grown from having three faculties to having nine, 12 institutes, from having just 60-something students to over 11,000 students, from having about uh, 30 staff to over 1,500 staff. And so, really and truly, the university has grown. We have over a, a, 153 different programs now. We have about 90 buildings of which about 70 are older than me. So there are some issues there with some of them. So we have a, a very serious uh, resource gap that we've always had to fill. Take for instance this year, and this has happened in successive years. The university has been expanding, but its, its, its resources are not expanding in tandem with that. So for instance this year, we need $11 million for, uh, for our uh, operations and this year we have 3.5 it is the biggest budgets we've had for in our in our history but it still leaves a gap of 6.5 billion dollars for us to fill and so um, if you go to the next slide please so if you we you look at our projections for how we were going to fill these gaps in the last in the next few years you will note that we have a sizable amount in fact that, uh, that is supposed to be filled by non-governmental um, sources. And so about 6%, or 6 to 7% of what we need, we're expecting to raise in the next three or four years from sources other than fees and other than, um, other than services and the government subvention that we get. In fact, we have to revise that a little bit now based on the, the last week's budget. So you see that the, it, it, it's really important for us to grow this capacity for uh, philanthropy and for investments in the university through other means other than what we do. And a lot of people uptake our services, like the private sector, for instance, they take up maybe about 40% of what we do, both internally and externally. And so uh, I think uh, the case is, is, is well, it's the, that's a very summarized case, but I, I would change the slide and go forward to what I really am um, going to speak about. But really and truly, please change the slide. Thank you. So back, we're giving back to the future. So like we go back, all the way back. Uh, the first attempt at something like a foundation uh, was done out of Toronto. Uh, this very beloved alumna, alumni, alumna that we have, um, Mr. Harry Hirgash, and they started the Toronto Guild of Graduates in the 1970s when a, a number of them moved away from UG and Guyana and went away to study. And up to last year when they won that foundation, that, that, that uh, um, uh, organization up, they always found a way to support mostly the university's library every single year but by hosting dinners and so on. But that was not a foundation in its, itself. In 1993, um, I, uh, Dr. Yasu Prasad indicated to, to me uh, that he was asked by um, the government at the time, it was um, the President Chadi Jagan, and then after he had passed, um, his, his wife, uh, former President Janet Jagan as well, to do something for the university. And so he started this um, foundation um, with UG's, for UG's 30th anniversary. That was, what, 30 years ago almost. And they gave us the Chad Jagan um, Lecture Theater. And so with the money is left over from that. Um, uh, Yasu Prasad, being the astute businessman that he was, took some of that money and invested it into shares. And so he has been giving those uh, dividend checks to me since I became DBC and Vice Chancellor. And I have been putting those aside um, specifically to uh, seed and support this foundation when it came into being. How did I know that I would need to do that? I knew that because in 2012, when I was chair of the university's 50th anniversary um, uh, committee, the council at the time in 2012 had approved a series of activities that we had to do. And one of those was to uh, begin an, a University of Ghana foundation. And we did that work. In, in doing that work, I would, like to, uh, I would like to acknowledge the sterling contributions of some of the persons who have passed like uh, uh, Dr. Martin Budu, who was in England at the time and who 
was the one who kept flying back here over several years, meeting with me, with a team that was council appointed um, and university appointed. So there was Odinga Lumumba at the council at the time. There was Ms. Gwyneth George, who was still the university librarian, Eric Phillips, Taney Husti, the university's lawyer, the registrar at the time, Vincent Alexander, who still worked on this other, um, this other, this, this, this new foundation that we have now. So there were quite a number of people working in 2012, um, 2013, 2014, and then things kind of came into a lull. In 2016, I became DBC for philanthropy, and I immediately picked this back up. But then there was another vice chancellor who, with a team in New York, had had a New York-based foundation uh, that was doing beginning to do very well. Um, and that, of course, has been wound up successfully. But in 2017, uh, 20, 2018, the council at the time, um, under the ch uh, chancellorship of uh, Professor Ian Harris, who's quite uh, humble in saying that all the work for this is us, is ours, <laughs> but he really um, was the chancellor at the time when we were doing this work, when we begun the work of um, getting the pr approvals. It was a long approvals process, as you can see, from 2018 to 2020. Uh, the council went back and forth. So these trustees are not trustees that were just picked up like that. There was a long list of about 30 persons that we had to review, do their background checks, and everybody on the council had to agree that these were the initial people who we believed had the pedigree. And then, of course, we had to get them to agree. And so we delighted that they agreed. And so we were able then to get the uh, approvals, not only for the foundation to be in place, but also for those persons who would, who would uh, serve the first foundation members that you would have met just now online. And then it took us another two years to get all of the paperwork done. This is where Professor Green and his team, um, as he became chancellor, I think he took this on as his daily job because there was not a day that passed when we did not get an email from him saying that I've spoken to this person, can we have a meeting? This board has been a, a, a really phenomenal board in their focus and their dynamism and their passion and dedication, and I think their integrity to what is right. And so we just got the, um, the foundation incorporated in Guyana in November, and then I am told it's of today, and this is great because you know UG has been trying to do this for 20 years, uh, they are now incorporated across the country, across the globe in, cer in certain uh, areas, in certain international spaces, so that persons who wish to give to the university now um, do not have to try to send me cash in an envelope, which is something that is really not something that we really want to have happen. So there are other ways now of giving, which, is a co which are accountable, tax deductible, and so on. Next slide. Next slide, please. So, um, I talked about um, Martin Boudou and Mr. Hirgash, and I think we can go to the next slide. I'm, I want to spend a minute, not in silence, but in, in homage to the uh, venerable benefactor of the University of Guyana and to many of us personally and otherwise. Uh, one of the greatest sons of Guyana's soil, Dr. Yesu Pasad, who we are thankful received an honorary doctorate from the university before he passed and who, as you would have heard, started the first really, uh, the real foundation, the first foundation, but it was not linked to the University of Guyana. This one is linked to the University of Guyana, so we couldn't, there was no way of us telling uh, Dr. Passard and that foundation what we needed and what we wanted. They decided what they would do with the funds, and they did good things. Uh, he also, of course, as you know, has gifted the um, Yesu Passard Medical Center, which was opened about a year ago. And the university has been working, had been working very closely with him. In fact, one of the reasons why the chancellor is present in Guyana here today is because we were hoping to meet uh, Uncle Yeshu, Dr. Passard, um, on this trip, because uh, he had never, uh, he hadn't met him, I, I believe, prior to this. And he was supposed to be a really, um, a really integral part of this event. Um, and uh, up to the last time I spoke to him, which was in early December 20, um, 2021, he kept, uh, you know, insisting that you know the work of the foundation was important and that he wanted to ensure that UG was able to be supported, and that while he never came to UG, he was a true son of the soil and he believed absolutely in UG. 
So in his honor and his name, I would like to announce um, and to hand over the first check for $1 million uh, to the foundation um, that is coming from those proceeds that he's been giving to me for the last three years that we said we were going to, um, we were going to, to hand over to see the foundation um, as soon as it was launched. I'd also like to thank George and Sharon Edwards um, for being the first historic donors to the uh, foundation yesterday when we opened our Guyanese bank account. They were the first donors, so thank you. Um, and may you inspire others to follow suit uh, very soon. Uh, so I, there's much that we could say about, um, about Dr. Passard, and of course, you know, we have a little book on him. We've done a symposium, and I know our School of Business is working on a permanent way of addressing his, um, his acumen and his contributions to business in the country. Next slide, please. So I just want to end by making some very clear distinctions between PACE and the UGF. PACE is, of course, philanthropy, alumni, and civic engagement. And of course, this is the office on the when I was vice chancellor that actually sponsored this uh, foundation's uh, proposal to the council and has been working consistently um, with the, the team uh, to make sure that it comes into being. So there is there is absolute synergy between PACE and UGF in every possible way. We have one aim, but we have different mandates and perhaps different ways of looking at these things. So we are inside UG. Of course, the foundation is, is autonomous and independent uh, with its own independent board. PACE is, of course, subject to internal to the university's council. Um, we have earmarked funds. So all our funds are earmarked. So when we get funds, it is to do X, Y, Z. We, do not we don't usually have funds that are, are floating around for anything we want. And so this means that we have to expend those funds within the time that we have the agreements. However, the, could you please go back to the slide uh, before? <laughs> so however, the, foundations, um, the foundation has the ability and expertise and mandate of setting out a sustainable long-term endowment. Um, and one that is going to um, ensure that we have funds that they can invest, they can receive property, they can receive all kinds of things, shares, all kinds of things that it's been difficult for UG um, uh, to, to, to manage in a particular way um, in, in the past. We've done it, but it has not been, um, it's been kind of not optimal. And so the foundation gives us that. Of course, the university, the foundation is linked to UG, and so PACE, along with the rest of the university, sets the university's gap funding agenda for the uh, for for the year or, or for a period. And so, as you would have heard, uh, the we have been very integrally involved in uh, setting those grand challenges goals for 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 the foundation, which they are, have graciously accepted to work on as their first uh, menu of items. Um, PACE will develop and implement most of the many of the projects because you have to find a mechanism for funding the money back to the university and PACE implements. It does not only, um, it does not only create the projects and so on, but it also implements. So wh wherever the funding is coming from, they have oversight to make sure that all of the contractual and other agreements. Philanthropy is very complex legally. Um, it's, you just don't get money like that. You have to really have compliance with all of the aspects of the agreements and a lot of legal matters, the, the bigger sums you have, have to be addressed. So that is one of the key things that PACE does and will continue to do um, as a receiving agent. And UGF, of course, um, claim is a multi-year big ticket. Um, it, it has a big international footprint, as you can see, and you'll probably learn a little bit more with some very impressive persons um, coming on board. Um, so I wanted to also make a point about the University of Ghana Alumni Association because that's also a, 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 a body that will raise funds um, autonomously on its own for UG um, and um, so there, there are going to be quite a number of, well three main, um, air, main entities that are recognized by the university. And that's really important, recognized by the University Council who will raise funds um, for different things in different ways, but all the funds will come back to the university to help us do the things for our alma mater that we really need to do. Last slide. 
So um, I'm going to skip these two slides, except to say that this is going to be up on the website. Um, we do have our 60th anniversary um, coming up uh, in, in October 2023, and there's a menu of things that we are, there are, uh, that we are trying to address um, in that, in, in, for the 60th anniversary. And so you'll be hearing about that separately. I don't want to detain this, um, this event by saying that, but simply to say that I, the grand challenges that we created are around this, um, are around this um, anniversary. So we have two years to meet some very significant um, um, goals that have been set. Um, they've not been announced, but I think we are going to hear about them soon. Um, and, um, and they are also linked. So a lot of sixties and sixes and six hundreds and so on, you're going to hear about in the next two years as we stride towards our sixtieth and making UG uh, take its rightful place nationally, regionally, and internationally. Last, please go to the next two slides. Skip that one. All right, so I am going to, I can't close without, um, you know, really a, sending our, our appreciation. Um, the late Paulet Paul worked with me on the 50th anniversary um, uh, project. She was PRO at the time. I was chair of the committee and Paulet would have been deeply uh, gratified today and elated to see that this is one of the things we started working on almost 10 years ago to see it happen today. But in her memory, her daughter lives and all those who worked with her we are able to say thank you for the work you put in. Vincent Alexander Taney Husti, Princess Alexander, has been working. She's on one of our associates, but she was working with us since uh, the 50th. I, I already mentioned as, as a council member, Odinga Lumumba, Ms. George, Gwyneth George, Eric Phillips, Dr. Martin Guru, who's also passed away. We have several attorneys, as I said, this has not been an easy task to put together a lot of legal things that had to be addressed um, which we will not bog you down with here but um, I'd like to thank alumnus um, Darren Wade, Dr. Kim Kite, um, Ms. Annie, Ariana Bihari and Chandra Kassar. Chandra is on our board of trustees and you will hear from her but these are all lawyers and I'm sure there were others in unofficial capacities who were, in, who were um, uh, who were asked to review documents and all the drafts of various things we had to do. Um, I'd like to say a special thanks again to uh, George Edwards for facilitating so many things behind the scenes with regard and helping us to navigate the uh, banking system of Guyana. The task force of the Council in 2020 for the refined documents selected, scored, ranked, and shortlisted. As I said, that was a long, laborious, and a very, 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 uh, interesting process. Um, Professor Nigel Harris, Professor Green and their councils, their respective councils that they would have. And retired General Major General Joe Singh. Major General Joe Singh was the one who was tasked on the subcommittee that the Ch Chancellor Green put, put forward to help us refine and choose uh, those, uh, the final trustees who would be uh, offered the position. So I want to really um, thank, uh, thank him and, and, and honor him today. Of course, PACE has been quietly in the background doing a lot of stuff for this. And otherwise, I'd like to thank um, those persons in deck for creating the beautiful backdrops and, and the UG out for pulling the relief out of, um, out of the, the, the logo. And of course, I don't know if Gabe remembers this, but UG's, um, UG's motto is serve all, right? <laughs> service so uh, so yes and of course um, we have all of this um, this question of all the various things um, we have had a, a, a long drawn out and very um, very very um, intense learning curve because as I like to say when I took the job of uh, DBC for philanthropy nobody in this country could pronounce philanthropy and now everybody is telling you that they're a philanthropist, and I think that is marvelous. That in five years, we can not only get people to pronounce the word philanthropy, but also to see it as something that is, that is important, something that, you, that is, is a model and something that they can work towards. So we want to ensure that we can continue this tradition um, and to make it into culture, as Professor Ramsey likes to say. Um, but we have had some training, and I, I would be, it would be very remiss of me if we did not in, indicate and thank those persons who have trained us 
among how philanthropy works legally, um, ethically, and uh, internationally, financially. And so Samna Hutchison uh, was introduced to me when I became DBC for philanthropy by the then Vice Chancellor, Professor Ivo Griffin, who sat in my office um, when um, I was DBC. So I'd like to thank them both for that. And we were also um, a subject and uh, given some training at Trent University through Professor Suresh Narayan and CGX. Um, we went to Diana and Trent, Ohio University helped us to see um, how philanthropy works and how you get on C lists and how you do research. And of course, Arizona State University um, helped us to understand that in, in these kinds of endeavors, you can also take on real estate and what you can do in endowments to really um, grow uh, real estate, because many universities don't want to deal with like things like real estate and so on. So we have quite a number of, please change the slide, a number of people that we want to thank. I'm sure there are many others, the faculties, students, uh, or SMTs. But this is uh, about the as much as I can go on this program. I wish to thank you very much for allowing me the opportunity to be part of this historic, uh, long, 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 long wrought and sought foundation. May it grow from strength to strength, and may it give this university that we all love the things it's ne it needs. And may the university, therefore, be able to fulfill its mandate that it was created for. Thank you very much. Thank you, VC, uh, very much for your presentation. As always, very thorough and on target. So we've had a quite, we have had quite—we will have quite a bit of change in the program. Um, we are very pleased to specifically welcome our associate members, all of whom are listed with bios and headshots on the on the website. Allow me to point out that they differ from trustees. Um, while trustees have the formal responsibilities for managing the affairs of the foundation. Associates function as patrons and lend their status and support to enhancing the global reach of the foundation and the university that it supports. It is my pleasure to ask three of the conveners to make brief comments. And ladies and gentlemen, I understand the Honorable uh, David Lamy has taken a break from Parliament and he would like to uh, make his speech at this point and then we'll have some entertainment after the three speakers. But let me first invite the Right Honorable David Lamy to make uh, remarks. Mr. Lamy is a, parli a UK parliamentarian with the Labour Party, and uh, he's a former Minister of Higher Education, currently Shadow Minister of Foreign Affairs and UG's Ambassador Extraordinary. And also, I wish to, to well, most of you would know that he's, he has deep Guyanese roots. Uh, Honorable David Lamy, the floor is yours, sir. Well, can I... I'm well, can I? Here or sitting I'm here standing here or sitting here in London in um, London in Parliament um, in and Parliament. It's and a it's wonderful, wonderful thing. A wonderful, wonderful thing to be able to of see the launch of this UG foundation. Diana is at Diana is at probably probably uh, the second uh, most the second crossroads most important in its crossroads. History. After in its history, independence. After independence, uh, this is a crossroads. That's going uh, this to is a crossroads that's going to transform of Guyana significantly. Of Guyana significantly over the coming generations. The coming generations. And it's so and important. It's that so important that young people, Guyana's the young people, are at what the is center to take place. Of what is about to um, take place. And um, do something that none of us have been do able something to do, that which none of us have been able to Guyana do, which is to map. put Guyana globally. on the map. Guyana globally. is a relatively Guyana is a relatively country, but small outsides, country, but with ambition and prospects, ambition and prospects at this time. You cannot and achieve. You cannot that achieve dream, that possibility, that dream, that without possibility, success without for Guyana's success young people. for Guyana's UG young people. has been doing a UG has been job doing a pioneering for job five decades for five decades uh, and every uh, and single every group single socio-economic group, group at the University of Guyana is represented at the University uh, of Guyana. Single ethnic uh, every single ethnic group, ethnic group is represented at the University of Guyana. There are young men. 
and there are young men young women. and there are young and women it is that wonderful and microcosm it is that wonderful of microcosm Guyana that you see of at the Guyana campus. that you see and at the ensuring campus. that and ensuring young people that get access young people to get the best. access so that to the they best. can harness the opportunities so that they can harness the that opportunities are landing in that huge are landing growth in this in the country huge period of growth is in the country hugely important is really hugely important and that really significant that can only be done that can uh, only be done through, uh, uh, through network um, um network broad um, as well as abroad, within the country as well as within uh, the country and of course it will take uh, and of course um, it will take philanthropy um uh, philanthropy alongside that uh, alongside that uh, ambition this is then uh, a this monumental is moment. then and a monumental moment and i think key things that i would pick out of course, key things that i would pick out of course uh is to uh ensure that Guyana's future is sustainable uh environmentally and, conscious uh, environmentally and conscious is engaged in and climate justice, is engaged in climate uh, justice to ensure that uh to ensure Guyanese that able to Guyanese are able the opportunities, to utilize the uh, opportunities that have come Guyana's way uh, that have come uh, Guyana's because way of uh, because uh, exploration of, of its uh, exploration uh, of gas its, reserves uh, oil and gas uh, reserves and to ensure uh, that, and to Guyana, ensure in that this period Guyana where in this tells period us where history tells us for developing that countries for developing um, countries these blessings can um, be these hopeful, blessings but can they be can also hopeful that they can problems. also the lead Guyana to problems has the no the Guyana has the no has the and has wit. the and the wit articulacy and to the navigate articulacy these to navigate um, these terrains for the benefit um, successfully for the benefit of its of all people. of its um people. i am honored to be um, the, i am honored um, to be envoy the, extraordinaire um, envoy extraordinaire for university honored the to work university with the honored to work the with the chancellor and the uh, vice chancellor uh, academic uh, council to have met academics, so many students to have met so many students over years. the last um, few and I will play my part, um, as and I, I will play can. my part as I best in can. My role as um, shadow, in my role uh, as foreign shadow secretary, uh, foreign here secretary in UK, here uh, in the UK, the uh, to support endeavors. the foundation's here endeavors in the United Kingdom, here where there in are the United Kingdom, Kingdom, where there are of a tremendous uh, amount uh, of UG uh, alumni. Uh, UG so this is a alumni. very very special. So day. this is a very very, very special very day. special moment. A very very I special moment. foundation. Well, I wish the foundation well. Well, really notable. and I think it's that this really notable achieved that this has been a global despite pandemic. a global pandemic um, despite all of the challenges um, despite facing, all of the challenges so facing uh, so many of us, tough time uh, in these tough times of as a consequence the pandemic of the uh, and pandemic that too signals, uh, and that too um, signal the possibility um, and the opportunity the possibility that and the opportunity ahead I look that forward lies ahead to this I look generation forward of young people to this generation of map, young people putting guy on the map I look forward to seeing I look forward to increase I look forward to increase um, philanthropy and I'm really, um, and really, I'm really excited really really excited. Thank you very much, sir, uh, for gracing us with your presence. Um, I, I, it shows the level of importance you have shown to, to the UG Foundation and to UG as a whole. Um, but if you have two more minutes, sir, um, we would like to play a song. I understand it's your favorite song. So if you can stay a minute or two more with us, that'll be good. Um, and for all those who uh, we started late, I hope we can make this up to you now by providing some entertainment. So sorry if you can stay with us, that will be fine. So um, I'm going to ask the technical people to queue up that song, Small Days. And that is being performed by Guyanese folk singer Marlon Jardine. Bye. 
Imagine some of you were singing and dancing, uh, dancing as the song was being played, and I hope that the Right Honourable David Lambie enjoyed that song too. Um, I now wish to introduce introduce you to Miss Diane Bourne. Miss Bourne is an attorney at law, banker, and philanthropist. She is a co-convener of the University of Ghana Foundation Canada, along with Mr. Fidel Hines, trustee and financier. Ms. Bourne, the floor is yours. Could you please go ahead and make your presentation? Thank you, Chair. Today I'm happy to share with you that UGF Canada has taken root. I have been working with Fidel Hines and together we have successfully recruited Guyanese and Friends of Guyana to become friends of the University of Guyana Foundation Canada. As of today, we have established groups in Ontario and British Columbia. It is our intention that the roots of UGF Canada will grow deep vibrant and strong like the greenhouse tree. It is also our intention that it will bear many branches as we continue to work towards establishing groups in other major cities such as Ottawa and Montreal. We are actively seeking to attract and recruit UGF friends from the Gen Z millennials and Gen Z groups with the hope that they will lend their vision, talents and passion to this charge. These generations are a great resource which we do not intend to go on tap. However, our compelling and overarching intention is that UGF Canada bears much fruit as we share and promote UG's grand challenges as established by UGF. We are bursting with ideas and we are always open to new and innovative ideas of ways to raise and solicit funds and donations to UGF. We hope our passion and commitment will be contagious and will motivate Guyanese and friends of Guyana to give generously of their resources and talents to support and enable UGF to achieve its objectives in the next 60 years and beyond as UG becomes a world-class institution of higher learning. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Bourne, for you, for the work that you and your team are doing uh, in Canada. Um, next, we'll have Mr. Ralph Bazilo, CEO and philanthropist. He is co-convener of UGF uh, USA, along with Mr. Gabriel Conji, trustee and entrepreneur. But before he comes, very quickly, let me just say that we'll open the floor for questions and, an and answers just now. So have your questions ready. Um, before we close the program, you'll get an opportunity to ask those questions. So Mr. Bazilo, uh, you have the floor. Could you please go ahead? 
Chancellor Green, Vice Chancellor Mohammed uh, Martin, board members and fellow associates. Uh, I'm a co-convener of the University of Guyana Foundation, United States of America Associates, along with Mr. Gabriel Cunha. It's with, it was with great pleasure that our 15 USA Associates met two weeks ago to discuss how we will contribute to the venture of the University of Guyana Foundation in support of the university. I'm originally from Region 5, and I've been living in the United States for many years. I'm currently a certified public accountant with an, uh, a company in the US as well as in Guyana. Uh, following my passion for higher education, I have provided financial support to many students attending the university and also to the university itself. The foundation being launched today started with a vision and, and we must continue to reach for what may seem to some as the impossible. The goals outlined earlier will be reached. Billions of dollars will be raised for the benefit of our students and faculty and in turn for the benefit of our country. Very strong relationships will be established with world-class universities that, that will allow the sharing of techniques and expertise. Also, that will have our students and faculty hosting as well as being hosted by other institutions of higher education throughout the world. I can see this foundation sponsoring chairs at, at our university in specialized areas of research leading to the development of graduates of the highest caliber. I can also see this foundation contributing to the development of world-class sports facilities that will one day lead to our students and graduates participating in sports leagues around the world. Indeed, I can see as this foundation pushes the university forward, students and faculty will be attracted from many countries much like universities in North America and Europe. I'm very proud to be a Thank you, thank you, Mr. Basilio. Uh, the next item on the program uh, will be remarks from the student uh, representative and the alumni representative. But first of all, I'd like to ask Ms. Somati Siranji, she is the alumni rep, to make brief comments. Good afternoon, everyone. All protocol is observed. My name is Ms. Somati Sairanji, and I'm the president of the University of Guyana. Uh, just a minute. I'm sorry I'm having internet. The internet is um, unstable a bit, so I'll have to take my video off, if that's OK. All right, I bring, of the University of Guyana Alumni Association Burbies chapter. I bring greetings on behalf of the Burbies, Georgetown, Toronto, London, and New York chapters. The University of Ghana Alumni Association is honored to be invited to be part of this board and to speak as, at this historic event because the University of Ghana Foundation is set to transform the University of Guyana. The UGAA is encouraged by the ambitious work program set out by the foundation and the efforts invested up to now. A quick glance at the background of the foundation shows that we have a lot of work ahead of us. The challenges identified earlier are four major areas that are critical for the development of the University of Ghana. Thus far, the VC and her team are making strides towards these goals. For instance, just to name a few, a large percentage of the staff is in the process of acquiring higher degrees, and many of the services and procedures are in the process of being modernized. New programs are being introduced, we have the establishment of the University of Ghana Institute of Research, Innovation and Entrepreneurship and the Green Institute, just to name two of the institutes introduced to accelerate research and innovation. There is more to be achieved with the support from the partners through the University of Guyana Foundation. The UGAA looks forward to collaborate with the foundation and its many partners as we continue our work to transform our university by achieving the goals of the university's blueprint 2040 and contribute to the development of our nation. So in closing, a hearty congratulations to the chancellor, vice chancellor, the SMT and the entire university on this significant development. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Ranji. It's very good to hear that the Alumni Association, uh, they are very much on board um, with this work uh, that has been started. I understand, uh, well, unfortunately, the president of UG UGSS uh, is, uh, cannot make it, and so someone else, uh, not a student rep, will read his speech. His name is Keith White. Uh, Mr. White, uh, can you please go ahead? Good afternoon. Yes, I'm in. Good afternoon, all. All protocols observed. I am Mr. Keith White, student representative within the Faculty of Education and Humanities. And I'm honored to be asked to make brief comments on behalf of the student body here. I wish to add my sentiments to all that has been expressed regarding this great initiative of the establishment of the University of Guyana Foundation. It must be acknowledged that the dedication and industriousness of the Vice Chancellor has served tremendously to propel this initiative. I am also grateful that the need to have a voice for the student body on this foundation's board was taken into consideration and provisions have been made to include a student representative. We eagerly anticipate benefits as highlighted in the grand challenges in the form of scholarships, especially for disadvantaged students, sustainable housing for students on all UG campuses, enhanced landscapes and safe space in our student environments, updated students' complex and dedicated sports facilities, the development of creative arts centers to fuel diversity, equity, and inclusion, and by no means least the development of an institute for the empowerment of women and girls, among many other benefits. It is hoped that the student body will provide clear and objective information that would assist in the decision-making that would, of course, affect the wide cross-section of individuals who make up this body. Fellow students, I encourage you to channel your candid observations for submission to the board. Board members, I wish to thank you for your willingness and I dare say eagerness to entertain and allow such submissions to influence your decision for the benefit of the students, university students, sorry, though not only this group stand to benefit. With these few expressions, I gladly say heartfelt thank you and wish the UD Foundation great success in its endeavors. Thank you, dear. Thank you very much, Mr. White. I'm sure the Board of Trustees would have heard the comments coming from the student body. Um, you also have an important role to play in this process. Um, next item in the program, we are running a bit late, but um, I apologize for that. But We'll get it through very quickly, and I'm, I'm sure the program is going interesting, so I uh, hope that you are staying with us. The next item in the program is the Mr. Shamari Williams. Uh, he will discuss the website and how it works and how you can access information and so on. So b b before he comes, let me quickly say that it's a work in progress, but he has done excellent work so far, and I want to thank him. Um, quite a lot of work has been put into this uh, uh, already. But um, I'm sure that you will be able to give your feedback at some point in time. Mr. Williams, could you please take the floor? Greetings all. I am Shamari Williams, and today I have been granted the honor of taking you through the UGF website. I will try my best not to bore you with other details of development, but instead I will stress that a website is not just a series of pages online, but instead a representation of the image and message of the UGF. In this case, I would be happy to present to you what our interpretation of the UGF message is. The website is built to focus on three main targets. The first target is that every single information piece necessary to learn anything about the UGF must be available on the website. This means that you, the viewer, cannot go on social media or any other platform and learn anything about the UGF unless it is already on the website. For that, we have enlisted a few sections of the website to focus directly on information, re representation and presentation. The information on the website ranges from details about our trustees and cherished board members 
to specific details about the, the grand challenges. Allow me to take you through those sections now. So as you'll notice on every single page of the Grand Challenges, there will be a list of the targets, the specific targets that the Grand Challenge represents. While this Grand Challenge is called Investing in Human Capital for a Sustainable Future, the specific Grand Challenges are as listed. And this, is, this remains true for every single Grand Challenge on the website. Who we are is built to promote our board members and our associates from all parts of the world. Here you can find out anything about our esteemed board members and associates. The second part that the website was meant to stress is our ways to give section. This section was built this way to emphasize that we acknowledge that there are multiple ways of a person contributing to the university and the foundation. As a viewer traverses the site and learns about the foundation, given the nature of the grand challenges and specific objectives, this person will become encouraged to give to the foundation and as such, the, the ways to give button appears throughout the entire site for convenience sake. As you can see in the header, the ways to give is there, as well as in what we do in every single grand challenge, it is represented and presented for your convenience. The last and final uh, objective that was meant to be achieved by the website is that it is built in an adaptive manner to facilitate the growth of the foundation's message and the foundation's image. I will close off by stating that the foundation is a growing body and as the foundation grows, the website will grow along with it, representing every single change, every single milestone achieved and every single step towards growth that the foundation makes. I encourage you to utilize the website and to not be afraid to email the foundation so that the foundation and the website can grow from your input. The website will be made available by the end of today. Thank you very much for listening to me. And more importantly, I must thank you for your interest in the foundation and our message to build a better, stronger university. As I said before, the website will be made available by the end of today. And the URL that you will access it is by using ugfoundationinc.com. If you try to visit the site now, you would not pop up because at the end of today, we are hoping to populate the site with everything that happened throughout the day on the website. So thank you very much again for listening. Thank you. 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 Mr. Williams. Um, looks simple, but quite a lot of work um, was, all, was already put into that um, in a very short um, space of time. And um, prior to the start of the program, Shamari Williams told me that he's the best um, there is, but I, I, I think he's justified it um, several times uh, with website-related work. Um, ladies and gentlemen, we, couldn't, uh, we can't close this, uh, this program without giving you the opportunity to ask questions. So um, we will now open the floor for questions. You're uh, invited to send your, to, you can either raise your hands um, in, in the Zoom and um, indicate, and we'll give you an opportunity to speak. We'll unmute you so you can go right ahead and ask your question. You can also type your questions in the chat using the chat feature. So um, uh, let's see, uh, is there any hand uh, up? So, up? Somebody will have to help me. Um, before you, uh, yes, so we're hearing you. So it'll be good if you identify yourself and where, um, stay where you're, where you're calling from, um, because we just want to have an idea as to the, the representation we have on this call. Uh, where are you from? Could you please go ahead now, ma'am? Yes, we're hearing you clear. Um, uh, uh, hold one second, let me just... That's okay. So.
Okay, yes. So could you please go ahead, identify yourself and where you're calling from and go straight ahead with your questions. And I'll ask uh, the member of the panelists to, um, I, uh, to take the questions. Um, depends on who you're addressing it to. It's actually not a question. But um, good afternoon, everyone. I think protocol has previously been um, acknowledged. My name is Yasmin Fazel. I am currently a fourth year economics student. Um, I just would like to say that I want to congratulate the teams that are on the University of Ghana Foundation. I know the work has been put in by different um, persons, individual organizations. And specifically, I want to um, say thank you to the Chancellor and the Vice Chancellor who put this initiative and gathered the teams in order to get this foundation up and running. We've had a brief um, view of what the structure is and I think that this is a wonderful initiative especially seeing where our country and our national university is heading to to accommodate our students on both campuses. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who would have to, uh, we can probably take another uh, comment, quick comment or question, and then the members of the panel um, will respond. Um, can, you hear, can you hear us? Could you, please on, uh, could you please go ahead? You're unmuted, so you can go ahead. You can go ahead and make your oh. comments or ask your question, sir. Yeah, hello? Can you hear? Yes, we can hear you. Go right ahead. Oh, okay, well, thanks. And again, congratulations, as the previous speakers have said, on the wonderful job in getting this done, and must thank your group and Diane for asking me to participate. I am a physician here. I've done extensive work in the area of public health, and I certainly do look forward to working with you folks. Um, I know the technology is not um, my greatest asset, but my son is involved in that. And the um, point I'd like to uh, make uh, is, and to offer whatever assistance I can, I have been involved in doing some guest lectures at the University of Guyana. I am from Rose Hall and do look forward to lending of my expertise in the area of um, infectious diseases control. I was the provincial epidemiologist in British Columbia before and worked with Health Canada and the WHO and certainly would be excited to participate with you in doing some online, uh, be it lecturing or whatever it is, and I do wish you all the success as you uh, go along on this uh, venture. And I'm proud of what you're doing. Thank you very much, John. Um, before we go to the next uh, comment or question, um, would the members of the panel wish to respond to those two or you want us to go? Okay, so we'll continue. Um, uh, the technical people have to advise me if there's anyone with their hands up. Um, okay. So just remember again, you can pose your question in the chat and we'll take it from there if you don't um, want to speak. You can also make a comment if you, if you wish. Okay, um, so it's, it's Professor Jason Marks on the line, um, on the call. Um, sorry to put you on the spot, sir, uh, but if you wish to, to make a quick comment, we'll give you the opportunity now. In the meantime, the others are getting the questions ready. Okay, so Ms. Jones has her hand up and um, please go ahead and uh, pose your question or make your comment. Ms. Hello, Jones? Good, yes, good afternoon. Hello to all. Uh, my name is Tandy Jones. I'm calling in from Georgetown, although I'm also representing my family, which is based out of New York. So I just want to say how very proud I am as a Guyanese person to be a part of this call. I know that it would have taken significant efforts to get to where we are. And under the leadership of the current team and the vision that they've outlined, it's just really encouraging to see the direction that the university is going. Um, I currently work for a service company, Slumberger, and of course, we've been working with Dr. Uh, Paloma in order to, you know, on several partnerships. So we'll continue to support her in this initiative, and, and it would be our pleasure to uh, potentially partner on this as well. But 
Um, on a personal note, my question would be, how do I, as an individual, contribute when I am out of, out of the country? So I would most likely love to give the first international donation representing my, uh, my family in New York. How would I go about doing so? All right. Thank you, Ms. Jones. Thank you for that uh, question and, and very relevant. Um, so I'm going to ask the um, Vice Chance Chancellor to make, um, to respond. Yes, Chancellor, could you go ahead? Yes, you want to come here? Thank you in advance for your kind consideration for a donation. And I just want you to know that when the website goes live, um, this evening, there will be a portal that would give you an idea of the account, the U.S. account here in Georgetown. However, we are making provision over the next couple of weeks to ensure that um, contributors from the U.S., Canada, and U.K. would have access to uh, the tax concession um, that, that prevail in those countries, the tax concessions that prevail in those countries, the 501C in uh, the, uh, the um, United States of America, and uh, the similar concessions for Canada and the UK being worked out. Um, the, the website will prompt you as to the release, but we look forward um, to that happening so quickly that you would have uh, been able to do so within the next couple of weeks or the latest within the next month in some places. Hopefully, you will still contribute and continue to do so and get your friends and your family to continue to support us. Thank you very much. Right. Yes, um, so thank you very much, Chancellor. So I'm being advised that there's a Ways to Give tab on the website. Again, let me go through that, go over that website uh, URL for you. So it's ugfoundationinc.com. Let me re repeat that again. It's ugfoundationinc.com. So that website will be available by this evening. Um, yes, that website by this evening. Right, so uh, a lot of the useful information that you need as to how to give, how to support, you would be able to access there. So um, thank you very much. And we're very happy that the, the, of the level of interest persons are showing already. Um, this is quite good news. We've started out on a really, really good footing. So um, is there any other question or any other comment? Um, we'll take about two or three more questions and then we'll, we're winding down to the end of the program. Okay, right. So um, uh, if there are no other questions or comments, we'll just bring this segment to an end. Um, Chancellor, any final words um, from you on this part? Vice Chancellor, any final words? Yeah, okay, so Vice Chancellor, um, Vice Chancellor is coming to make some final uh, comments before we close this segment. So just to simply say thank you all very much for staying on the call this long and for sending your wonderful notes of congratulations coming to us directly and sometimes in the chat. We look forward to making the University of Ghana great through the University of Ghana Foundation. And of course, we do not exist for ourselves. We exist for our lovely, beloved country. And of course, as a, a wonderful and committed, responsible international uh, member of the international family. So for Guyana, for the planet, for UG, thank you very, very much. All right, thank you very much, VC. So let me repeat that website URL uh, for you that you can access. So it's ugfoundationinc.com, ugfoundationinc.com, if you want to access that this afternoon. Um, so the next item, on, I wanna thank you all again for your questions and your comments. Um, the next item on the program, they will, well, we're coming down to the end, is closing remarks from Chandra Prasad. 
uh, a trustee uh, for, of UG Foundation. Ms. Prasad, would you like to- Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. All protocols being observed, I'm indeed honored to be among such great people, potential donors, friends and well-wishers of the University of Guyana Foundation. All of us will agree that such a foundation is an important milestone in the history of Guyana, and the visionaries of such an important organization needs much more than mere compliments. We recognize that it is important that charitable nonprofit organizations earn public trust at all times, and therefore the commitment to ethical principles, transparency, and accountability is paramount for all of us. The Foundation is therefore committed to working in sync with all of you and cannot overemphasize the, the important role you will play in building this Foundation. It is important that friends, well-wishers, supporters and donors of the Foundation understand that the sole purpose of this Foundation is to support the University of Guyana in its mission and development. It really has no other business. Against this background, I therefore want to express our gratitude to the Honorable Minister, Madam Priya Manishan, for taking time out and to celebrate the establishment of this foundation at the university's history. I take this opportunity also to encourage all of us to support the aims and objectives of the foundation and therefore commend this golden opportunity for you well-wishers to make your financial and non-financial contribution to the growth and development of this university, our premier institution in Guyana. I thank you. Um, the, the various presentations, um, and we are very encouraged, the University of Guyana is very encouraged about the comments that we've heard from all our partners, our trustees, our associates, uh, our associates, um, students, the alumni rep, uh, and so on. We're very encouraged. Again, I wanna say that this is an exciting journey that we've started at, uh, at UG, that we're continuing actually, and we're very, very privileged uh, to have all of you on board with us. This is quite exciting for us. Um, uh, I just want to thank all of you for the time spent with us. So uh, to the speakers, uh, the Minister of Education, Honorable Minister of Education, the Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, uh, the, the reps for the Alumni Association, the, the student rep, thank you for your presentations and uh, right Honorable David Lamy for your comments and other trustees. Um, Thank, thank you all for um, and, and those who have um, joined us from various parts of the world, various parts of the world. I want to thank all of you very much um, for joining us. Please remember to visit the website, um, the University of Ghana Foundation website, which will be available by this by the end of this evening or so. And you can access that at, at ugfoundationinc.com. Uh, do continue to remain safe and may God bless us all. Thank you very much. <laughs>